hi guys I have a brand new tutorial for you and in this video we're going to be making these adorable hedgehog hangers throughout the video I make this little guy right here and I hope you enjoy following along so without any hesitation let's begin so here are the materials that you'll need to create your very own hedgehog we've got some core wool then we've got a selection of different coloured top wool this is a mix of merino and corriedale then I have a pipe cleaner which I believe is also known as a chenille stem I've got some twine but you can also use ribbon or yarn just whichever you prefer I've got scissors I've got felting needles, I've got a reverse felting needle a 38 gauge, a 40 gauge and a 42 gauge and then of course I've got a felting mat so I'm going to start with the pipe cleaner and the twine the pipe cleaner is approximately 30 centimeters long and then I've cut the twine to be just shorter than the pipe cleaner so I'm going to start by finding the center of the twine and just tying a knot at one end just like so and then the pipe cleaner I'm going to fold in half and then I'm going to cut it straight in the center now one side I'm going to put to one side and keep that for later and then the other section I'm going to fold in half and then I'm going to take the twine where the knotted end is and I'm going to sandwich the knot in between the pipe cleaner like so then I'm going to begin twisting all the way down so that the knot and the twine is sandwiched and stuck in the pipe cleaner just continue twisting until you reach almost the very end and now I have these two little tiny bits at the end which I'm going to fold out like so So now we're going to add some core wool and this is a core wool sliver from Simply Felting. So I'm just going to break that in half because it's a little too thick and then I'm going to hold one end at the top of the pipe cleaner and just hold that on nice and tight and then I'm going to begin wrapping the wool all the way down to the bottom of the pipe cleaner when you reach the bottom you can fold up the two ends that were out to the side and then continue wrapping and wrap all the way back up just like so I'm going to pull off the end and I'm going to start felting this down just so that it's nice and secure I'm just using the 38 gauge needle just to make sure it all stays in place I'm just going to felt in the top and the bottom as well just to give it a nice rounded shape And keep rotating your work that way you'll get a nice even layer because if you keep felting it in the same place for too long your work's going to go flat whereas we want it to be nice and round so just keep rotating your work and felting as you go so I've decided that I'd like to make mine just a little bit thicker so to do this all I'm going to do is take another small section of core wool and I'm just going to roll it up on the body like so then I'm going to start felting and just continue felting and rotating until we get a nice rounded shape
So once you're happy with the shape, we're just going to mark a little line about one third of the way down. I'm just going to use my felting needle just to mark out a little line as a guide, like so. So I'm now going to take a very small section of core wool and I'm going to begin rolling the wool like so. Then I'm going to give it a couple of felts just so that it holds together. This is going to get placed just above the line we've just created and we're going to push in the sides to create a small bump. Then we're going to felt this down and this will become the base for the nose. I'm just going to felt a line straight down the centre of the bump. So with that little section of wool added, you should have something that looks similar to this. This is now ready for the first layer of colour. So for my hedgehog I'm going to be using white for the body and then I'm going to use two different shades of brown to create the spines. But you can use whichever colours you like. So I'm just going to take a very small amount of white wool. I'm using merino but you can use whichever top wool you have available. I'm just going to very carefully just break it up a little bit then I'm going to pull apart the fibres and stack them on top of each other and I'm just going to keep doing this until the wool is nice and fluffy like so then I'm going to lay it out on the mat and I'm going to continue adding some wool until it's about the same just a little bit larger than the length of the hedgehog's body So once you're happy with the size and the shape of the white wool, just take a 38 gauge needle and felt it in a few times on the mat. You don't need to felt it lots, just felt it enough so that it all holds together. Then once you've felted it a few times, you should very carefully be able to lift it from the mat as one whole sheet of wool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over so that the fluffy side is facing upwards and I'm going to place this over the front of the hedgehog so that the entire front is covered. Then I'm just going to begin felting this down again using the 38 gauge needle. I'm just going to keep felting with the 38 gauge needle until all the white wool is tacked down in place. So keep flipping it over and felting all around. I'm now going to find the nose bump by carefully pressing around the head until I can feel where the bump is. So I'm going to place my finger and thumb at either side of the bump and carefully felt around it. And again, top and bottom. And this just helps to define and separate the bump from the rest of the face. So now that we have the bump found, we can continue felting all the way around until it's nice and firm. You can switch between a 38 gauge and a 40 gauge needle for this.
When felting the nose bump, I'm going to start by felting straight down the middle. Then I'm going to curve the needle around up to the sides of the nose to create a little smile line, like so. Then I'm going to switch to the 40 gauge needle and I'm going to felt down and felt in all around just to try and help keep the shape of the nose. Keep the shape of the smile by felting it over and over. Just keep using the 40 gauge needle and shaping the nose. I'm now going to take a very small amount of a light brown wool, just a very small piece and then I'm going to roll it up in my fingers. I'm just going to give it a couple of felts on the mat just so it holds its shape and then once you have a piece like this you can very very carefully pull off any edges and it'll just give a nice smooth blend when you add it on to your project. So now I'm going to place this very tiny piece over the nose and just felt that on again with the 40 gauge needle. I'm now going to take some dark brown wool. I'm just going to pull off a very, very tiny strip. You can barely see it, but it's just a few strands thick. Then I'm going to roll it up in my fingers, just so that it forms more like a thread. And this is going to get placed, starting at the top of the center line of the nose, and we're going to bring it down and around each side for the smile line. So I'm going to start by placing it in the centre and felt that down. Then I'm going to bring it round one side I'm going to trim off one side and felt around the other side. So now that the smile line has been added, I'm going to take a very small piece of white wool and I'm just going to roll that up into a little sausage. And I'm going to place this underneath the smile and I'm going to felt it in just like so and this is going to create the bottom jaw. For a little bit of extra detailing, I'm just going to add a very small amount of pink around the nose. So to create the actual nose, I'm just going to take a very small amount of black wool. I'm just going to roll that up and I'm going to place it towards the top of the nose bump so just above the centre line place one end down and felt then the top end I'm going to fold over and felt that down as well then I'm going to continue felting and just shaping the nose to form a little triangular shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, you can shape it any way you like. This is just how I like to do them. So 
So for the eyes, I'm going to start by taking the 38 gauge needle and I'm just going to mark out where I want to place the eyes. So next I'm just going to take a small amount of black wool, I'm going to roll that into a little ball and just place it into one of the points that we've just marked out. I'm going to use the 40 gauge needle and just begin felting that down. Don't worry about getting the shape perfect because we're going to be adding some eyelids on top anyway. So I'm just going to repeat the same steps on the other side. To add some shape to the eyes, we're going to make some tiny eyelids and to do this, I'm just going to take some white wool, I'm going to take a small amount and roll it into a little sausage shape like so. I'm going to place one end of this towards the nose, over the top of the eye, towards the nose and felt down. Then I'm going to curve it around to the other side of the eye. So now I'm going to continue felting all the way around and just keep felting and shaping the wool until you're happy with the shape of the eye. So now I'm happy with the shape of the top eyelid, I'm going to take another small amount of white wool and make another teeny tiny sausage. And I'm just going to place this along the bottom of the eye to create the lower lid. I'm now going to repeat the exact same steps for the other eye. I've now finished shaping the other eye and I've also added two little tiny white spots just to give a bit of a highlight. So next we're going to be adding some brown ready to create the spikes of the hedgehog. I like to use two different shades of brown, I like to do a layer of the lighter brown first and then a second layer with the darker brown on top and the reason I do this is because when we use the reverse needle the lighter shade comes through and overpowers the darker shade so you get a multi-tonal variation and I just prefer the way that it looks but of course you can do it to however you prefer, it's all down to your preference. So starting with the light brown wool, just like we did when covering the body with the white, I'm just going to pull off small pieces and then I'm going to fluff them up like so. And I'm just going to felt this down on the mat, just like before, just a few times so that it holds its shape, holds together. I'm going to lift this up and flip it over. So I'm going to take this sheet of wool and I'm going to place it over the head just like so. And I don't want to cover the face, I want the face to be visible. So I'm just placing it over the top of the head and I'm going to tuck it in place. Then I'm going to bring the wool around the sides on each side. I'm just going to lift it up and find where the string is then I'm going to cut a small hole in the wall and then I'm going to pull the string through just like so 
then I'm going to continue felting this down. I'm just going to fluff up some more wool. Just to add to the bottom of the hedgehog. We felt that straight on as well. I'm going to repeat the same steps to add a second layer with the dark brown wool. So once the second layer of brown is all felted on, we can start moving on to creating the spikes. So this is where we're going to be using the reverse needle, but if you don't have a reverse needle, don't worry, you can get a similar effect by using a pet brush. Just gently brush over the brown and it'll make the fibres go all nice and fuzzy, which you can then just trim down with a pair of scissors but if you do have a reverse felting needle I would definitely recommend using this as it gives you more control over the placement of the spikes so I'm going to start at the bottom of the hedgehog and work my way round and up towards the top so instead of inserting the needle straight in I'm going to angle it very slightly to about 45 degrees and I'm going to insert it just so that the first two spikes of the needle get inserted into the wool and I'm going to pull up a few fibres just like so then I'm going to leave a small gap and repeat this step So again, 45 degree angle, small gap, and just pulling up some fibres. I'm just going to continue repeating this all the way around, making sure to leave a small gap in between each sort of chunk of fibre. So here's what it looks like with a few layers of spikes done and I'm going to continue using this method all the way up the back of the hedgehog. So we've now got little spikes going all the way up the hedgehog and looking a little bit crazy right now. So now I'm just going to take some scissors and I'm going to trim it down. I just pull out all the spikes so that all the fluff is facing outwards and then I trim down. 
same again on the back pull it all out and then trim down I'm just going to keep trimming it until I'm happy with the length and the shape of the spikes all trimmed up and looking a lot better so from here if you really want to define the spikes a little more you can take a bit of Mod Podge or craft glue and just twist it into the ends of the fibre or personally I quite like it how it is but that's just another option if you want to take it to the next level so next we're going to make some little ears so I'm going to take a small amount of white wool and I'm just going to roll it up like so and I'm going to place it onto the mat now I'm going to mark out the shape that I want the ear to be and following the outline of the shape I'm going to fold over the edges and felt them in two I'm going to carefully lift it from the mat flip it over and I'm going to felt the other side as well so once I'm happy with the shape I'm just going to lift it up and I'm just going to hold it tightly between my finger and thumb and I'm just going to pull off the very end then it leaves a nice fuzzy edge which will make it a lot easier to felt onto the hedgehog so I'm going to place it in a diagonal angle just above the eye and I'm going to felt it down in the middle first then I'm going to curve the edges around and felt down each side I'm just going to keep felting and make sure it's nice and secure Then I'm going to repeat this again for the other ear. So the hedgehog now has two ears and we're going to go back in with the reverse needle and we're going to go all the way around the outside of the white and just gently fluff it up and this is going to give the appearance of fur. So just all the way around the white edge. There we go, all nice and fluffy. So now I'm just going to take the scissors and give this a little trim just to neaten it all up a little bit then I'm just going to take one of the felting needles and just very gently fluff it up The main body of the hedgehog is now finished so I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to take some pink wool and this is going to be used for the hands and feet. So I'm going to take a small amount and just mess up the fibres and I'm going to lay it out flat on the mat. So now I want to create a shape that is rounded at the top and looks similar to sort of a fingertip so it's rounded at the top and straighter down the sides then the bottom is going to be left nice and wispy to make it easier to attach so I'm just going to take the 40 gauge needle and just mark out the shape that I'm aiming for I 
and just like before I'm going to fold over the edges and felt them down I'm going to carefully lift it from the mat and flip it over and felt down the other side You can check the size by placing it against your head jog. Now these are going to make the hands, so I want mine to be just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to work more focusing on the edges and really felting them in towards the centre. And again, I'm just going to flip it over and felt it down. And I'm just going to repeat flipping and felting until it's nice and firm. I'm just going to pull a little section from the bottom end just because it's a bit longer than what I'd like it to be. And then I'm going to make another one of these using the exact same steps. So there we have two hands, now they are quite flat but that's because they're going to get felted onto the head jog and then folded around whichever item you decide your head jog's going to be holding. So now we're going to make the feet. I'm going to take some more pink wool but for the feet I want them to be thicker and more rounded than the hands so I'm going to place the wool on the mat and I'm going to begin folding it all the way down to form a sausage shape then I'm just going to give it a quick couple of felts just so that it holds together Then I'm going to flip it up and one end I'm going to keep nice and loose and the top end I'm going to felt in and start to form the curved top of the foot I'm going to lift it up and flip it onto its side and felt again and flip again and I'm going to keep flipping it and felting until it's nice and round and I'm happy with the shape Once I've reached a shape that I'm happy with, I'm going to place my finger over the top so that it covers most of the foot. Then the very top I'm just going to fold over, then I'm going to felt in this line in between where it's folded over. And this is going to give the appearance of toes that have been curled up. and I'm going to make another one of these using the exact same method. So now we've got two arms, two feet and a body. We're not going to assemble it just yet, so I'm going to place it all to one side. And now we're going to make a candy cane for the hedgehog to hold. I'm going to take the second half of the pipe cleaner that we put to one side earlier, and I'm going to fold it in half, Then I'm going to twist both sides together, all the way down. Like so. And I'm now going to wrap the entire pipe cleaner with white wool. So I'm going to pinch it at one end and wrap all the way down.
I'm just going to use the 40 gauge needle and very carefully felt the ends just so that it all stays together. Use very small and steady pokes because of course the pipe cleaner is in the middle and you don't want to risk breaking the needle. So just very carefully Next we're going to add some red wool. So I've got a thin strip of red wool here and we're going to wrap it around the pipe cleaner. So I'm going to hold it down at one end and wrap just a couple of times. Then I'm going to leave a gap and continue wrapping. Leave a gap and wrap again. And continue this all the way down like so. And again I'm going to use the 40 gauge needle and just felt in the end. And once that wool's all secured at the end, we're just going to fold over the top to form the candy cane. You can use scissors just to trim off any fuzzy ends if you wish to, just to help neaten it up a little bit. And now this is ready to attach to the hedgehog. So now is the time that we can start assembling our hedgehog. So I'm just going to place the candy cane over the hedgehog and just play around with positioning to see where I want it to sit. And once I've found a position that I'm happy with, I can then start thinking about the positioning of the hands and feet. So I quite like them to sit here. So what I'm going to do is hold one hand in place and I'm just going to remove the candy cane. Then I'm going to put the hand face up towards the hedgehog's face. I'm going to felt down one end. Make sure it's really well felted on. And this is going to get folded over and hold on to the candy cane. So again, I'm just going to place it over and then position the second hand like so. Remove the candy cane and place the hand up towards the head and felt that on as well. Again, I'm just going to pop the candy cane back on, like so, while we work out the positioning for the feet. So I want one foot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it upside down towards the bottom of the hedgehog so that the toes are curled underneath. I'm going to felt down this end. Again, making sure it's really well felted. and I'm going to flip the foot up and fell into place. And again with the other foot, I want to place it face down so it's to the towards the bottom of the hedgehog. Make sure it's really well felted on. And flip it back up. I 
I've left this foot a little bit loose and that's just because I want to wrap it around the candy cane but if you want to have your foot nice and secure then of course just felt that on as well but now I'm going to place the candy cane over and I'm going to start felting everything into position so I'm going to fold the hand over and felt that down again I'm being very careful because of the pipe cleaner in the candy cane just taking very steady pokes and shaping the hand around it and same again for the other hand I'm just going to position that how I want it and felt down I'm just going to position the foot how I want that to be and again just felt it down and just making sure everything is nice and secure Once you're happy with the positioning and everything is nice and secure, you can go ahead and add any extra details if you wish. All I'm going to do is take the 38 gauge needle and just very gently mess up the fibres just on the belly and it's just going to make it look a little bit more fluffy and really blend everything together. And once you're happy with it, that is your hedgehog completed. You can, of course, make your hedgehog called anything you like. So these are a few that I've made. And they're all following the same steps for the hedgehog. And I've just changed the object that they're holding. So I hope this video helps you. And I really hope you enjoyed following along. Thank you so much for watching. And I can't wait to see your finished pieces.